What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to VHS Tacos with another excellent edition of This is Actually Gonna Swear, Please Don't Leave. This time we're gonna hit you with a monster alien movie with 2018's The Predator. Give you a simplified plot breakdown. The movie kicks off, you have a Predator ship in space, it's being attacked, crashes, that intersects with our humans, human discovers it, played by Boyd Holbrook, he's deemed crazy by the United States government, Olivia Munn plays a scientist, they have a predator captured. Predator breaks free in a glorious, gory, awesome fest. Goes bananas on everybody. She chases after it, but as the crazies are being transported, they see the predator, they take over the bus, then they chase after it, they intersect with Olivia Munn, they catch up with the predator, and then boom! Predator's killed by a super predator, who is then not just after the humans, but after Jacob Tremblay, the son of Boyd Holbrook, who is autistic, keep that in mind. The movie continues on with them trying to stop the super predator, and then you have the bad guy played by Sterling K. Brown, who chews through that scenery harder than he chews through that Nicorette gum. Everybody all combines at the end, Sterling K. Brown is taken out, super predator kidnaps the autistic son, and he tries to shoot off into space, crashes down thanks to the awesomeness that is Boyd Holbrook, him and Olivia Munn take out the super predator, and then boom, the movie ends on a terrible cliffhanger. The good, the acting in this movie is top notch. Like I said, Boyd Holbrook, he's our leading man. And the man has played some really super good supporting roles. He's played bad guy really well. So it's nice to see him play kind of like an anti-hero of sorts. It's a real rugged good guy. You uh, have a fantastic supporting cast with the rest of the crazies. A couple standouts are Keegan-Michael Key and Thomas Jane as like these two like super, super close buddy-buddy crazies. They have some amazing dialogue. You have Trevante Rhodes in there as well, who he gets probably the most backstory out of all of them. One particular scene between Boyd Holbrook and Trevante Rhodes is they're just kind of kicking back on a couple lawn chairs at this rundown hotel, having a couple beers, and they're they're just trading life stories. And it feels like they're old friends, even though they've just met. But that is the power of the writing from Shane Black. And then you have Olivia Munn, who is a scientist who then turns into like super action star. She handles everything pretty well. You have Jacob Tremblay as the son, who as I previously mentioned, he has autism in the movie, but that factors into the plot later on, which is both good and bad, but we'll get to that. And he, he does it well. He strikes a nice balance, kind of like in 2017's Power Rangers. You also have Sterling K. Brown as the bad human who Man, is he fantastic. Every time he's on screen, he's just got this swagger about him where he, he's in charge and in control of every single thing and every single person in the room. At any given time, even when he's like staring down a super predator, he's still in charge. The writing, the dialogue, as I've said, it works really, really well. There's one particular scene that after the whole interaction with the bus and the predator and Olivia Munn meets up with all the crazies, she wakes up in this hotel room and all of the crazies have kind of put their own little their own little tokens their little things all around her on the bed as she's sleeping just as a way to kind of ease her into knowing that they, they don't mean her any harm which of course leads to some absolutely hilarious and filthy and dirty back and forth between everybody great jokes between Olivia Munn and Thomas Jane Kegel Mike and Key and then you have the action which is fan I mean, Shane Black, he has done everything from like Lethal Weapon to The Nice Guys to Iron Man 3. So the man has had plenty of time to really just kind of hone the craft in writing these really crazy, really inventive action scenes. And this movie's no slouch when it comes to that. You also have uh, the action beats where the super predator first shows up and goes toe to toe with the regular predator. The action at the end, the whole finale, which involves like a whole forest showdown with Sterling K. Brown and his bad guys and the rest of the military up against this thing. And then it involves some of the remaining crazies hopping onto the ship to save uh, Boyd Holbrook's son. And then it involves Olivia Munn and Boyd Holbrook going up against the super predator tracker. And it's, it's all well done. It's all kinetic. It all flows so well. And then you have some of the plot beats. A lot of the plot stuff in here is very, very unique. So, like I said at the beginning, you have a predator ship that's attacked. And then it comes crashing down to Earth. But they don't really tell you why until later. So come to find out the predator has come to Earth to warn the humans of this new breed of predators. And give us a weapon. 
So that it's that's a nice unique spin on it. They kind of took what AVP did, but did it better than they did. You also have the fact that the Super Tracker Predator comes to decide that his primary mission is getting Jacob Tremblay, the son, and taking him with him. There's a part at the end where the humans are able to decipher what the Predator says through studying their technology and come to find out that the Predator is here for the son because he believes that the autism that the child has uh, is the next stage of human evolution. Not for the bad. This movie is choppy and that's because of 20th Century Fox. Shane Black and Fred Decker had this idea for the movie and they had an idea that would stretch out into a trilogy. Fox came in, had them reshoot the entire ending to where it would take place in like a forest showdown situation and they cut out this whole like tank chase thing with the Predator and they made them add in this, this terrible cliffhanger which involves th what the Predator in the beginning was originally here for and it was to give us this Predator fighting suit which was like a suit of armor that would make humans faster, better, stronger, it had the gun on it. And then the movie just cuts right to, straight to the credits and then that's it. You have the pacing, which once again, because of the choppiness, sometimes the movie, it moves so fast, it moves so quick and swift, and then other times it kind of drags because there's no flow anymore. They went in there and they cut a lot of stuff out, also due to some actor controversy that happened like literally a couple weeks before the movie was released, one of the actors they had a, a personal background that was released and revealed, which didn't sit too well with anybody. And so they cut him out of the movie, but unfortunately by cutting his stuff out, they cut out an entire subplot starring Edward James Olmos as a, middle, uh, as a military general. The movie, it feels choppy, it feels cut up. It, the ending isn't bad, the one that we got, it's just not as wild and crazy as it should have been because it is Shane Black. And once again, you have that cliffhanger of an ending, which, ah, oh, goodness. I, just like last week and the week before, these cliffhanger endings are killing these movies that they want to build into a franchise. You just need to focus on the one movie that you have at hand, and then if you're lucky enough to get a sequel, you just keep moving on from there. That is your movie recommendation for the weekend, 2018's The Predator from Shane Black, starring Boyd Holbrook. It's not a bad movie. It's a very fun movie. At times, it's a very smart movie. It's very witty. The action is fantastic. The visual effects are top-notch. They're, they're not a slouch like last week's. Ugh. So, if you guys have seen 2018's The Predator, let us know down below in the comments. If you liked it, let us know down below in the comments. If you hated it, let us know down below in the comments. We'd love to talk to you guys. Find out, you know just what, what your opinions and what your feelings are on it. And as always, as per usual, keep it locked in on Twitter, keep it locked in on Instagram. Don't forget to do a like, don't forget to do a subscribe here on YouTube. This has been VHS Tacos, signing off, and until next time, adios.